Dying Light 2 Nightmare Mode is like stepping on Legos while your feet are lit on fire. <laughs> Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and we're going to talk about Dying Light 2's Nightmare Mode, what's changed in this update, and what's next for this game. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! <laughs> As you all know, Dying Light 2's Nightmare Mode is finally here. How do you feel about it? It's gonna be okay, buddy. He's not okay. When I heard about this mode a week ago, I had low expectations for it because 1. There are times where I choose not to indulge in the masochism. And 2. I had my doubts that there would be significant changes aside from harder gameplay. However, after the cinematic teaser, Dying Light veterans were predicting that this mode would give us the highest level of immersion. Therefore, as a zombie hunter myself, I thought I'd give this mode a chance and replay this game on New Game Plus to form a proper critique on it. Therefore, what comes with Nightmare Mode? Well, this mode took me from feeling like a certified badass to looking like someone who just raged from Flappy Bird. As I progressed through the game, I began to gradually understand why it was called Nightmare Mode. Firstly, the game now has a tactical stamina system and that itself is a nightmare. stamina will fully deplete after you leapt from a ledge and used your paraglider. In fact, I've died countless times from fall damage more than the ripped volatiles. It's like Aiden was not only infected by a volatile, but infected with smoker lungs as well. Finally, a worthy opponent, our battle will be legendary. Apart from stamina, the light from your flashlight will be much dimmer and the nights will be darker. According to other creators, your flashlight will flicker and go out after after around 3 minutes. Then again, it may be a good thing considering volatiles and other infected love our flashlight. Once they spot you, it's not difficult to escape them in a chase, but once they catch you, their hits damage your health bar significantly. And considering some grab animations are still a bit janky, it can be hard to slip out of their grasp. <laughs> In terms of increased damage, the same applies to human enemies as well, as they are much tougher. The devs have also incorporated a chase level 5, where volatiles and tyrants pursue you relentlessly. I haven't reached that point, because I did escape the chases. However, from what I've seen on chase level 5, it looks insane. Like out of Aiden Babaden's fever dream, the UI is also more limited, as certain HUD options are locked in this mode, including the ability to see the time. So, you won't be able to discern how long you have in the central loop before the volatiles welcome you with their warm, firm hugs. All of this is happening in your nightmare in Villador, and even the in-game menus cannot keep you safe from the zombie snoo snoo. This mode has a way of making you feel weak and powerless, but on the other hand, you get 5 times your legend level XP and higher chances to get rare items. When playing on this difficulty level, you will be forced to play more tactically, otherwise you die. Eventually, you learn when to engage in combat, when to run away, and when to replenish your stamina. And if you survive Dying Light 2's nightmare mode, you get a Walt skin and bragging rights. That's human skin? No, not that kind of skin. Unfortunately, I had to lower the difficulty as my inner night runner was feeling like... <laughs> Aside from Nightmare Mode, over 70 cutscenes have been changed or improved, especially with dialogue. For example, Aiden no longer gets hit first before a fight begins. I'll kill you, you son of a bitch! <sighs> And instead of hearing Waltz's viral screams, we can actually see him chase us in his viral form. <laughs> At the beginning,
beginning of the epilogue, we're introduced to a completely different scene, where Aiden discovers a group of volatiles before falling through the floorboards. Whereas before, a renegade threw a left hook at him before Aiden fell through the floor to a hungry horde. Also, when we were doing a mission for Juan, we encountered a tech expert named Kurt in the cathedral before he surprised us by throwing a punch at us and running away for defeating Jared Leto. Now, he will surprise us by giving us a concussion with a large barrel. Surprise! Talk about making friends in strange places where a first impression hits harder than a barrel to the face. Apart from the cutscenes and the nightmare mode, what other changes are in Dying Light 2? Well, do you remember the Doom shotgun we obtained from a glitch in the game? Instead of one-shotting enemies, it will either require more shots or won't work at certain parts of the game. The gore has also been adjusted, allowing your combat to get messy. Oh dear heavens. Enemy AI have been adjusted including the infected as they can attack you even in hiding. The main menu also went through a redesign as per the comparison I'm showing on the screen. Dying Light 2 also has a new loadout, enabling us to switch between our fabulous gear sets. Co-op is also available on community maps, we have a new bundle called the Game Over Bundle, and there is a new skin for our grappling hook on the Pilgrim Outpost. In addition to these changes, there is an ongoing hyper mode alteration event, where grappling your enemies can send them up the sky to the moon. Perhaps this could put us at an advantage when completing Nightmare Mode. Now that I've explained the current changes enough about the present, I'm sure you all came for the important substantial info. What is next for the future of Dying Light 2? Techland was working on gun finishers, but scrapped them, which made sense because finishers require close combat. But they did emphasize two items on their agenda that will be well worth the wait for the community. Tower raids are next in development, which are going to have playtests very soon. From what I've been hearing, there is a possibility that we could be doing tower raids around late May or early June, which makes sense considering Techland was secretive about the details. Timon Smectala has also confirmed in interviews that a DLC 2 is in the works. He believes that this DLC will grow to be bigger than what it is. It has big, huge! As we know, we had a lot of rumored leaks and theories on DLC 2, including it taking place in Elysium. Therefore, who knows what could be in that DLC to make it as big as the team claims. I just hope that the new DLC will become just as beloved as the following was in Dying Light 1. Expectations will be set high as the team seems to be placing a lot of focus in providing the best experience with tower raids and DLC. Aside from these plans, most likely we could also be seeing new zombie types as Techland continuously releases new updates and content. We'll never know until we actually see these for ourselves. So what are you looking forward to in Dying Light 2? Tower Raids? DLC 2? What are your thoughts on Nightmare Mode? Do you enjoy playing on Nightmare? How can Techland continuously improve Dying Light 2? Comment your thoughts below. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe for more content like this, like the video, and hit that notification button. If you if you want to keep up to date with the latest gaming news on games like Dying Light 2, go follow my Discord. You'll be informed on updates, meet veteran peeps like myself to play co-op with, and have the opportunity to participate in raffles. Thank you for watching, and that's all. I'll see you next time, Pilgrim. Good night and good luck.